The most common way to grow potatoes is from seed potatoes. Of course, it's also possible to grow potatoes from potato seeds. But is there another way, a way that perhaps we've never tried before? Check out this experiment. Guten Yardening, everybody. Welcome to the channel. If you've never been here before, I hope you enjoyed this experiment. And if you're returning, well, welcome back. You should know that we are obsessed with both sweet potatoes and potatoes. But sweet potatoes are not actually related to potatoes. In fact, they're part of the morning glory family. So if you grow morning glories and you see them bloom in the morning, you can go and look if you're growing sweet potatoes at the same time and you'll see that the flowers look almost identical. Sweet potatoes grow as the roots of the sweet potato plant. And so when we talk about increasing the size of sweet potatoes, we're really talking about growing or expanding the size of the roots. But that is not how potatoes grow. Potatoes are actually modified stem material. So what we have here, this is a fingerling potato that we harvested a few months ago. And you can see it's actually ready to be planted if we want to. It's got a ton of great sprouts coming up from the eyes. They're about an inch long each, which is just perfect for planting. But this purple potato, it is past ready to go into the ground, but we'll still be able to plant it, so no worries. But the potatoes are part of the nightshade family. And as you might know, nightshade, some varieties of nightshade are absolutely poisonous. And it's one of the reasons why we don't eat the berries that form at the top of potato plants, because if we did, we wouldn't last too long. What we do have inside those potato berries, though, are true potato seeds. And you can see a nice close-up here. There are tiny little potato seeds. And we can plant these potato seeds, and we can probably get some potatoes out of them, even though they'll be different than their parent plants. But there are actually other vegetables that we grow in our garden, some pretty common vegetables that are also part of the nightshade family. We grow eggplants. Those are nightshade. And we also grow tomatoes. So tomatoes and potatoes are in the same family. Now, one of the reasons why we might not consider them to be a part of the same family or think about them as part of the same family is because we actually eat different parts of the plant. We focus on the underground portion for the potatoes and we focus on that delicious garden candy at the top for our tomatoes. But since they're part of the same family and they share some pretty common traits, can we try to grow some potatoes the same way that we do with some of our tomatoes? Now, earlier this year, we did a video where we talked about a way to increase the number of tomato plants you have for free. And that involved looking at some of the volunteer tomatoes. And believe me, if you plant tomatoes in the ground outdoors, you will have a future in volunteer tomatoes because as any uneaten or unused tomatoes fall to the ground, a full season goes by, the gel on those seeds wears off, and then they start to grow. And so you could end up with way more plants than you planted initially. But on top of that, tomato plants have, in between their lateral stem and the main stem, they have a diagonal stem that we often refer to as the sucker. And the sucker can be really useful because you can actually take it off put it in some water, allow roots to develop, and then plant it and get fruit. Potatoes are part of the same family, and potatoes also develop suckers. So if you look nice and close here, you can see the stem, the main stem of our potato plant. And then off to the side, you can see some of the lateral stems as well. And right here in between them, you see the beginnings of a diagonal shoot. And that diagonal shoot is going to be our sucker. Now, as time goes by, those suckers develop leaves, they grow longer, and that's just part of the potato plant as we think about it before the potato plant dies back. But what if we could remove one of those suckers, place it in some water, could we get some development from the stem that would then lead to production of tubers, to production of actual potatoes? And that's where these two come in. So these are suckers that we removed, this one about three and a half weeks ago, that we placed into water immediately. So this has been in water from the time we cut it off. And we did make one mistake early on. 
And we'll talk about that in just a second. But this has been in water the whole time, and you can see it's still alive three and a half weeks later. So the question is, what do you think is happening underneath all this foil? Now, there is a reason why the foil is there, and that goes to our first mistake, something we should have taken into consideration right away. The clear bottle that this is in allows light in. And because it does that, when the stem is exposed to light and these nodes start to develop, well, we start to see leaves form, and that's not what we want. So for the last two weeks, we've had this enclosed in foil to prevent light getting at the stem on this sucker. And you can see where there were some leaves developing, but you can also see where from the nodes we're starting to see something else come out here. Now our hypothesis is this, if we can take this sucker and plant it deeply in the ground beneath all of these nodes, there's the possibility that it will develop potatoes. Remember, potatoes are not the roots. Potatoes are modified stem material. So we have all the material here, it would seem, to develop those roots. But can this sucker differentiate between making leaves and producing those tubers that we really want? Now, this is an experiment that we've never seen anyone do. So the end result is a complete unknown to us. But we're speculating that there's the possibility that we could actually get some potatoes in the same vein that we get tomatoes from our tomato plant. And I also want to show you this sucker because this one is even more impressive in some ways. It's a little bit smaller and what we see growing beneath the surface is a little bit different. We see the development here of what appear to be some roots along with, well, we're not quite sure what these other pieces are going to turn into. Again, the key here is that we're trying to get tubers and not these leaves. So we're going to plant both of these. What do you think the possibility is that we get some potatoes from this, a harvestable amount? I don't know, but again, we have a plant that's in the same family as our tomatoes that work perfectly when we plant those suckers there, so why not? I'm going to show you right now how we're going to plant this. All right, for planting, we're going to use the exact same potting mix we've been using here indoors, and that is our cocoa cure, a bit of peat moss, some vermiculite, so we have some really good drainage, but also moisture retention. And to this, in addition to our general organic fertilizer, we're going to fortify this soil to help these roots develop as much as possible. So we've got our bone meal, which in the NPK, if you're looking at that scale, this is a 412 zero, so we've got lots and lots of phosphorus in here. We're adding some pure mycorrhizal inoculant these mycorrhizals will also be assisting us in root development. We're also adding langbionite, and this adds some potassium, which is going to strengthen our plants and help them against any disease or any stressors that being planted the way we're doing might cause. We're also adding our azomite. These are our trace minerals. And we're going to throw a little bit of calcium in there in the way of some pulverized eggshells. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to plant this first one all the way above. So we're going to get it down as deeply as we can all the way above this node. And this is a three gallon grow bag. It's not the biggest grow bag, but it should give us enough depth if we go as far down as we can here to get that buried. And what we'll do is we'll mound a little bit of this mix around it. And if I have to add some more, which I will here, we'll bring it up just a little bit higher. And that's going to bury that one. That's going to take care of that one. I'm going to add just a little bit more mix, and that takes care of our first one. And the second one's a little bit shorter, but we're still going to plant it above this node here. You can see we have some growth coming out here, so we want to get it right above here. And I'm actually going to remove this little piece, and we're going to plant it right, right down through here. So a little bit more than half of the sucker going in. I'm going to be gentle with it. We have a little bit bigger hole here because the roots are spread out a little bit. And there we go. Both of them in their grow bags. And now the growing process beneath is going to start. Now this is the beginning of what hopefully will be a very interesting experiment with the end result being, fingers crossed, 
but some potatoes grown from these suckers. We don't know what's going to happen next or how well they're going to develop, so you have to stay tuned for future videos so we can update you on this experiment. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, let us know what you think is going to happen. Remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, when you're with us, you are good to grow.